the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Some of you may know that uh, my oldest daughter and her family live in San Antonio. This is actually their third different time living in that city. So they had a great opportunity and a very good fortune visiting there. San Antonio is just a, a great city. And if you have ever been there, have you ever seen the Alamo? Of course, the Alamo is just one of a series of structures called missions. Uh, small farms and churches that were built along the San Antonio River in Texas to support the evangelization of the indigenous peoples there at the time in the early to mid-1700s. Well, if you haven't been there, many of us have seen likenesses of the Alamo in movie westerns, of course. In the movie, there it stands, a small isolated fortress in the hill country of Texas. The Alamo is also famous for Davy Crockett's Last Stand and others there who fought in the Texas War of Independence. But to see the Alamo as it is today is to be surprised and startled at first. That's because the Alamo is not out there in the open like you see in the movie. It's actually in the very middle of downtown San Antonio. It's right in the middle of high-rise structures, streets, and traffic. And you don't get that sense when you just see a picture of it this big. It's no longer that solitary structure that you see there in the movie. And it's small. It looks so small. I'm told that the Jordan River in the Holy Land has the same effect on visitors. The Jordan River. The Israelites crossed that river into the Promised Land uh, in the exodus from Egypt, slavery in Egypt. The great prophet Elisha sent the foreign soldier Naaman to go down to the, go down to the Jordan and dip yourself in it seven times and you will be healed. And John the Baptist chooses to do his baptizing thing there at the Jordan River. But what surprises pilgrims to the Jordan River is really how small and inconsequential it is. The river itself is only about 150 miles long. It runs from a source north in the mountains through the Sea of Galilee and empties into the Dead Sea in the south. And it is not a fast-moving river either. At most, it's 10 to 20 yards wide, and it's wide as the most. And it's only about 6 feet deep. And its name means Dan Flows Down. Jordan. Dan being one of the tributaries of the Jordan River. It flows down literally to well below sea level to its end. And for all its symbolic significance, the Jordan River is nothing much more than a lazy stream. But it's what happens there that makes all the difference in the world. You see, because out of the countryside, at the edge of the Jordan River, John begins baptizing. Now, a little bit of background on this, too, that you need to know. That there is a baptism. There is a water tradition and a ceremony in the Jewish faith of both John and Jesus. The Jewish rites of baptism, or the rites of purification, is intended for converts to the Jewish faith. But John intends for his baptism to be something else entirely. Because John's baptism is not conversion into the Jewish life of faith, it's meant as a change within that tradition. Repent, he had said earlier. Repent and be baptized. Symbolic of a change of both heart and mind. It's going in a new direction of faith in God within the Jewish spirituality. And of course, Christians today we consider baptism to be one of our seven sacraments. For us, baptism is an affirmation of our part in the death and the burial, and more importantly, the resurrection of Jesus. In baptism, we rise too to eternal life with the Lord, and we commit our life to the way of Jesus. So then, John's baptism is nothing if it's not different and unconventional. He is saying to anyone who dares to listen, he says, your customs, your traditions have gotten you nowhere, and your world is a big mess. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Your world is a big mess. So it's time to start all over again, to turn around, and to do things differently, to do things better, and to do things with passion. 
We are never told why Jesus chooses to be baptized by John. But consider the baptism of Jesus to be a sacrament of his mission. We think of sacrament as an outward and visible sign of the inward and spiritual grace. So think of, a, think of baptism of Jesus as the sacrament of his mission to make faith and practice more inclusive, more accepting, more forgiving, and more aware of the radical presence of God who is to be in our life moment by moment. This is the mission of Jesus. And his baptism is a sacrament of that mission. So then Jesus steps forward to take the plunge, literally. What is meant also by this is this, this is meant to be a clean break with his past. Jesus is no longer just the carpenter from Nazareth. By his baptism, Jesus is putting himself in the hands of God for something new, for something different, and something better. And even John gets it. Even John the Baptist gets it, but he recognizes the audacity of it all. He said, no. I need to be baptized by you. I need to be baptized by you. So then, if Jesus is willing to be so different and so unconventional, consider that God just might be like that too. Because Jesus will show us a God who takes the ordinary, God who takes the normal, and God who takes the expected, and God changes that. And surprises us with an unexpected, extraordinary new way to approach both our faith and our life. We are being repented. We are being changed again into the way of Jesus. So today, as we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, and momentarily as we get to renew our own baptismal vows, consider your baptism to be your liberation. Consider your baptism to be your liberation. Consider the vows that you are going to renew today to be your freedom into this new way. Because in baptism, what is done by you is just as important as what is believed by you. So in baptism, we join with Jesus to do what is good, what is right, and what is just for all of God's people. We heard what Peter had to say about this. Our, our name say Peter in this in one reading. Peter is essentially called the rock, or as we might say today, that's what Peter means. It's rock. But we might call him today, we might call him Rocky. So Peter stands up in a group of outsiders, a bunch of outsiders. They were known as Gentiles or the non Jewish. And Peter then, in the midst of them, he declares the heart and the soul of the way of Jesus. He says, I truly believe that God shows no partiality and that every nation and place, everyone who does what is right, is acceptable to God. Everyone, everywhere, acceptable to God. There are no exceptions. Because in baptism, we are much more than acceptable. We have been declared God's beloved, just as God says to Jesus. You are my beloved. And with you I am well pleased. So that we are empowered to do better than what is conventionally acceptable. If baptism means anything, it means that you are to make the Spirit of God come real in this world. Remember that the way of Jesus, which is your way, it shakes up conventional thoughts and it shakes up conventional structures. Following Jesus doesn't mean that we follow Jesus in the church. More importantly, it means that we follow Jesus out of church to do the work and the mission of Jesus out there. Following the way of Jesus is an example of a, a radically inclusive way that this insanely divided world needs to hear right now. And you are to be that witnesses. The baptismal vows are the words that, that world needs to hear because the baptismal vow brings to life Jesus' great commandment. Love God with all your heart, your mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as 
God loves your neighbor. And love yourself as God already loves you. So when we stand and say our vows, we will stand and say that we do believe in God. We do. And that we will continue in the way of Jesus. We will say that we will never rest in resisting evil. And that we will proclaim the good news of Jesus in word and deed. And that we will seek and serve Christ in everybody to respect the dignity of every human being. No exception. So Peter once stood up and said, I truly believe that God shows no partiality. You, you now have a spirit and a power because of your inclusion in Jesus by way of your baptism. Now, now, God needs you. God needs you to be the inclusion. God needs you to be the acceptance. And God needs you to be the unconditional love that our deeply divided world deeply needs. In God's name. Amen. Amen. <coughs>